welcome church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. I'm going to grab this mic because I'm not sure of my ability to stand here. Oh. God made me a man that needs to move. And, uh, I have a real hard time sitting still. Just ask my mother since I was a little boy. Um, I just want to say to begin this little talk. You know, the Bible says that pride cometh before fall. Okay. So there's one side. But the other side of that ditch is a deep depression. The other side of that ditch is believing that you're not worthy or you don't have a right to be here or that God didn't make you special. Okay? Either way, it's wrong. You know, I had a nice talk with a young lady yesterday, beautiful young lady. She had it done. She had her fingernails just <coughs> right to the bone. And I said to her, I says, <coughs> Are you nervous? Are you okay? I mean, what's going on with you? She confided that she had some issues with depression, things that bothered her, you know. And uh, we had a really nice talk. And I told her that she didn't have the right to think that way. No stinking thinking. That's what I call it. It's stinking thinking. God doesn't want on a stinking thinking. Listen, I don't care who you are, or how well you are in life, or how educated you are, all of us have terrible thoughts, okay? They come in. But that doesn't mean we need to chew on them. doesn't mean we need to, be, we, we need to make bread with them. Kick them out. Throw them away. Get rid of them. You know? The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And God has not given us the spirit of fear. Right? right? He's given us what? A sound mind. Amen. Yeah. Power. He has, he has walked before us. And He's offered to come and walk with us in the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful gift. So let us not get bogged down. And let us not be full of pride either on the other side of it and overthink. You know? Put the Lord Jesus Christ first in all that you do. You know? Because it really doesn't matter what I think or what you think or what somebody else thinks about things. What really matters is what God thinks Amen. and what He says. That's where the rubber meets the road. All right? So if we do that, if we're focused upon Him, all these other things, they just fall right in place. They just fall in place. It's not our doing, it's His doing. Right? Philippians 2.13. Isn't that what we just read? Okay. Let's read it again. Philippians 2.13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Amen. So what our little talk today is going to be about is about God's will, our will, and how we can marry them together. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful idea? You know? Um, if our will is married with God's will, everything's going to be right. That's exactly how Jesus lived his life. Right? Every step of the way. So, are we talking, is this, is this a spiritual war? Absolutely. Yes. That's what it is, right? It's a spiritual war. It's not a carnal war. It's a spiritual war, but the spiritual war rolls over and flows into carnal, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. But the real, the real place where the war is taking place is spiritual. Mm -hmm. We have to let the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, take possession of the mind, the spirit, the heart, and our character. That's where the victory will come. Is that what you guys want? Do you want victory? Yes. Isn't that what we're all after? Peace? Yes. Victory? Has the Lord already granted us that? Yes. It doesn't he speak when you when you study the Bible, don't you yes. find it past tense? Oh, it yes. is given to you. Yes. yes. So so where is the problem? Where do we make things so difficult? 
because we're not in belief of what he said? What's, what's the issue? I mean, I think that's got to be something there, right? If we're to have real victory, how do we do this? How do we have real victory? What's John 14, 6 say? John 14, 6. Anybody know? I can quote it, but let's go there. Right. Jesus says, I am the way. What does that mean? The way to God, right? Mm -hmm. Right? I am the way and I am the truth. The what is truth. the truth? The truth. The truth. The no truth. Way. The genuine article. Thank you, Don. <laughs> the truth. Right? You could take the word truth or Jesus and they're synonymous. Right? Boom. And the life. What does that mean? He's the life. That's one way to do it, Robert. Appreciate that. Yeah. The life. Jesus is the only life that mattered. Do you follow me? And let me let me explain. Because God only accepts absolute perfection. Okay? <laughs> absolute perfection is only found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Period. Amen. That's why he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And the Bible makes no excuse for it. It says, and no man cometh to the Father but by him. Amen. Period. Right? <coughs> Let us turn to Romans 13, 4. I'm going to try to make this really short and sweet because you guys got me up here like, well, afternoon. <laughs> Not that that's a big problem, because uh, you know what? I think it's important what people have to say, and it helps us understand each other's plates in life and what's going on and what we're facing and what we're, um, you know, because listen, brothers and sisters, we are all struggling with something, all right? Yes, There's none of us here that are without a struggle, okay? Some people are struggling a lot harder than others. And some people are just real good at hiding their struggles. Mm -hmm. But we're all struggling. You know, we have to have a lot of grace for those people that, you know, when they come up to you, you can just hear the baggage cars clicking behind them as they walk. Because they got a lot of baggage. You know? You got to love them. You got to hold them. You know, you got to be Jesus. That's what we're here for. Amen. That's what we're here for. You know? And there's only one perfect. Bible says one. So we, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a little problem or it's a great big problem. We all got it. You know? Um, many people with lots of money, I mean, you could look at it. Lots and lots of money. They have big problems. Their kids end up suicide, drugs, all this other stuff. And they're not any happier than anybody else. Okay? They drive a car with a couple more zeros. They have a house with a couple more zeros. But everybody basically has the same problems, right? And it's this wicked heart that we all have that cannot be fixed. It can't be fixed. The Bible says it must be crucified. Hallelujah. There is no other way. There is no other way. Jesus, when he walked on this earth, he walked what? To his own way? No. He was led by the Spirit. And that's what he wants us to do. Romans 13 and 14. What do we have here? The Bible says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. What is that saying to you? Does that, what does that mean to you? Let me tell you what I hear when I, when I read this. I hear that it's not my bad Okay? The Lord has already won this battle. And He wants to show me how to live in victory by following Him. Do you hear it? Amen. Let's read it again. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? How can you fail there? There's no room for failure now. If you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, who can be Him? He's never lost. Hallelujah. He is never lost. Even though the devil has pulled out every obstacle possible, 
he has never lost. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now what would be a provision of the flesh? It would have to be me turning away from Jesus, right? This is the only way sin happens, okay? We turn and forget God. That's how sin happens. Mm -hmm. If we're focused on Christ and we're walking with Him, you can't sin. It's that simple. You cannot sin. You have, as the Bible says in Romans 14, 14. This isn't rocket science, brothers and sisters. But put ye on Jesus Christ. We have to believe it. We have to really believe it. Like a little child believes. Why do you think children are so happy? Because they believe. You know, they really believe. As we get older, you know, a lot of things happen in life. Life happens and, and we get disappointed. And, and, you know, some of us parents get divorced. And we sit on the steps and we wait for dad to show up. And mom says, hey, dad's not coming. Oh, dad said he's coming. So you believe. And you sit there all day. And he doesn't show. And your mom cries. And you begin to disbelieve. Right? Your heart gets broken. Maybe once, maybe twice. You know, other things in life happen. We get conditioned in this world. We let things bother us. We let them get in. And we stop believing the way we're supposed to believe. This, this really isn't that difficult, brothers and sisters. This is a very simple message. The Lord says, put on Christ. Believe that you have Him. And be with him. And sin is not a problem anymore. It is when we forget God, when we start to disbelieve. It just takes a moment. Just a moment. Because God doesn't force anything. He wants an intimate relationship. And an intimacy is not something that comes in the heat of a moment. It's something that's, that's put on over time. You know? Intimacy is in to me see. Okay? You don't do that like this. You know? Especially when people are all trying to hide everything. They're not, everybody's got a mask on. Even if you don't have a mask on, you got a mask on. <laughs> Come on. Really? All of us do. So let us realize when we're dealing with one another, our brothers and sisters that, that make us upset because they didn't smile at us or they didn't sit close enough or they sat too far away or they didn't talk to me first. You know, all this stupid stuff that comes into our heads. Throw it away and love one another. Amen. That's what God says will differentiate us from the rest of the world. Amen. This love that we have one to another. And this love is forgiving. Listen, what did Jesus do? I mean, when they came with Mary, and I, I, this so upsets me. These guys are such hypocrites. They bring her, like, she did this wicked thing, this woman. Well, where's the guy? Right? right? Where's the guy? Because there's two people here. Where is he? They didn't bring him. They bring her. And Jesus has what for her? Nothing but grace. Right? Yeah. He took two is right. And he's like, okay, all right, if any of you guys be without sin, you cast the first stone. Right? Ooh. That set a different tone, didn't it? And then the Bible says that he got down on his knee and he started writing in the sand. And I bet that I, I can't prove this, but I think I know just because I, God is who he is. Jesus was sitting there and he wrote girls' names in the sand. And the Bible says that the oldest to the youngest left. Why did that happen? The oldest probably had the most sin, huh? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Jesus is so loving and so kind. And he said he had no he had no stone to throw at her. He had no accusation. But what did he say to her? Go and sin no more. Right? He didn't condone it, but he loved that woman. And he said, I'll be with you. You don't need this garbage anymore. Right? This is who Jesus is, and this is who He wants to be with us and for us. He wants to live in you. He wants into me see. You see? This is a spec this isn't just 
this little quick brush confrontation here, not even a confrontation, a little communion. He wants real communion. Amen. Real communion. Amen. Have you read the book of Song of Solomon? Hello? That's some serious book. God wants that kind of intimacy. All right, let's, um, let's turn to Romans 16. We're already close. 16, and let's begin in... Uh, That is not what I want. I have no idea why I wrote that down. Hmm. 1620? No. <laughs> Let's just go to Romans 12. I'm sorry. I have no idea. That's okay. No, I'm sorry, here it is. Romans 6, 11. 6, 11. Likewise, the Bible says, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead. Did you hear that? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Reckon yourselves also to be dead. What is the key there? What's the key? No, reckon no, yourself no. to be dead. No, your brain, your thoughts, selfless. There, there's a faith and a reliance here, isn't there? There's a faith and a reliance. What, what kind of faith is that to liken yourself dead unto sin? That's a whole lot of faith. That's a whole lot of faith, isn't it? Yes. Let me turn this mic on because I can't stand still anymore. Um, does this mic work? Yep. All right. Good deal. So, when you're living, you, you plan life, right? Yeah. You just plan life. But things happen in life that you don't plan. Mm. So, then you have to redirect. Do different things. And make new plans. But what if, say for instance, you got news today that you had a week and you were going to die. One week, seven days from today, you're going to die. Mm. Would you stop all planning for life and begin planning to die? Yes. You would, wouldn't you? All right. Okay. So there it is. Reckon yourselves dead. Right? But alive unto Jesus Christ. Right? It's a different way of thinking, isn't it? You know, we say to ourselves, oh, you know, yeah, we're not perfect. So, um, you know, I, 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 I'm probably going to sin again. <laughs> Hello? Haven't I already defeated myself? Yes. I've already defeated myself before I even began. How in the <clears throat> world am I ever going to gain the kind of victory that God's looking for? Because that's the kind of victory that God's looking for. The men and women that are relying completely upon him and not making excuses. Mm -hmm. Reckoning themselves dead and alive to Jesus Christ. Putting on Jesus Christ. Not, not, not making excuses anymore. Getting serious. You know? It's like you got guys that go to the gym and they just go to the gym and they... Eh, I went to the gym. Right? And then you got guys that go to the gym and they're dead serious about what they do. And there's a total difference in these couple guys, right? Mm -hmm. A total difference. They're both going to the gym. I'm using the gym because I don't want to say church. Hello. <laughs> they're going to the gym. And there's two different guys, right? And there's a lot of, boy, my time is running out fast. All right. Keep going. So, we don't mind. 
Anyways, this, this, is, this is where it is. The battle is in the mind, right? So we, if we want to start winning the battle, we got to first of all kick out the stinking thinking, right? That's, that's the first step. First step. It, it's not, it's not going to stop. The devil is not going to stop, especially if you're beginning to get victories. Because you know what's going to happen? If you're going to begin to get victories, you're going to get attacked more than you ever imagined because you're getting too darn close, you know? And, and the devil knows if you get on fire that he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Because that's what God's looking for is people that are fireproof. And you know what fireproof means? It means you're on fire. You can't burn something that's already on fire. Right? Hello? Who are the people that are going to be in heaven? The Bible says people that are on fire. Right? God is a consuming fire. Okay? If you want to be in His presence, you need to be on fire. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what He's looking for. And that's what He's given you. But we don't believe it. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. We walk around believing all this stinking thinking. Throw out the stinking thinking and put on the full armor of God. Amen. That's the way it's got to be. And you're going to be in victory. Don't make excuses anymore. I'm going to sin again because I'm just a human being. No. You believe God. And stay focused upon Him. Because you, you, you're, you are going to slip if you take your eyes off of Him. Because that's all it takes. As long as we're focused upon Him, wow. I mean, we're just watching Jesus watch the world. You know what I mean? That's the way it is. It's like your mind is just opened up like a flower. You ever see a flower just, did you ever watch flowers just come? You know, we have to watch it slow, but you can watch it on TV and fast. It's like, wow. You know what I mean? That's the way our minds can be. And God wants to make it that way. He's given it to us in Jesus Christ. We just got to believe it. Do you believe it? Amen. 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 All right. Faith, brothers and sisters, is the principle. It's the mighty force provided by God. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me? Yes. Faith is the active principle, the mighty force provided by God. Don't expect defeat. You hear me? Don't expect defeat. If you expect defeat, you're going to get defeat. Let me give you, I'm going to confess here now, because this is terrible. I hate this. The other day, I, I played ball a couple nights a week, and um, there's sometimes I allow this stinking thinking in my head, too. Like, wow, oh, you know, some nights you just don't throw the ball that well. Your, your accuracy is off. Just something, you know, something in your head. Your accuracy is off. And the other night I played, and, you know, I still throw the ball okay, but it's not perfect. But there's other days where the mind is right, and I'm telling you what, that ball, it's just like it's on fire. I just, boom, it's like you don't even think about it. Bang, right where you want it to be every time. Boom, boom. But what's the problem? I've done it before, and it doesn't happen all the time. So the problem is what? Me. It's here. This is a problem. You, you got guys that play baseball. They play. They, they pay millions of dollars, right? Millions of dollars. These guys they hit a ball, right? And sometimes they go on a slump for a month. They can't hit a ball. They're still paid lots of money, but they're up there and they're like, "Ugh, what's going on?" I'll tell you what's going on. Stinking thinking. That's what's going on. And that's what's the problem with the church. If if we don't cut out this part of it. How in the world can we ever grab onto the good? You can't grab onto the good when you're hanging on to the filth. You got me? We want victory. This is where victory comes. This requires full commitment, not a half-hearted acknowledgement. All right? I said it in, I said it in the Sabbath school class. All that call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, shall be saved. What does that mean? If I just call upon the name of the Lord, I should be saved? No. We're talking about the way Peter called on the name of the Lord. When he's sinking in the water. Lord, save me. Hallelujah. Because there's nothing else out there. I'm by myself. Drowning. 
Okay? We're all drowning without Jesus. This, this, this life is like a bad dream. This place is horrible. It's wickedness everywhere you go. But God wants to shine brightly in his people. And that's how this thing finishes. That's how it finishes. I don't care how light it is outside. If you get in a hole, a dark hole, and look up at noontime, you can see the stars in the heavens. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? God is going to have the brightest light when it's the darkest. Mm -hmm. When it's the darkest. And he is going to be proved who he is by the very last generation. And I don't think we're getting better. I think we're getting worse. Okay? We're devolving. As they, they tell you, we're evolving. I don't see any evolving. I see devolving. That's what we're doing. We're going down. But God is going to wake up his people. And they're going to look to him. And they're going to quit stinking thinking. And they're going to be focused on Christ and put on the whole armor of God and march millions like one man. Can you imagine how beautiful that would look? Just think of God commanding from heaven his people and they all walk like an army, his church. How beautiful that would be to him. Have you ever watched a marching army? What did you think? Were you proud? Did you go, wow, look at that. God wants to see that in his people. Amen. And when he does, this thing's closing up shop. Yeah. Game over for the devil. Yes. He's a finished foe. Amen. He's a finished foe. He's Amen. done. He's, he's, he's got no teeth and he gobbles all day long. All he can chew on. And he tries to put things in people's minds like you're not good enough. You know? Or other people, he goes the other way. Hey, Mr. Pride, you can throw that ball pretty good, can't you? Right? Hello? There's all kinds of ways to fall. But if we focus on Jesus Christ, you're not falling. Amen. You're not falling. Mm. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Trust God. Trust God to do the work, brothers and sisters. i got to wrap this thing up. We've got three minutes over. Uh, Romans 6 and 12. I want to uh, just go a little bit further. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield. You hear the word yield? Yield. Neither yield your members as instruments of righteousness into, unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. I just want to read you something here. Yield. It's a verb. Okay? Yield is a verb. It says to bear or bring forth as a natural product, especially as a result of cultivation, to produce or furnish as return, to produce as to produce as return for an expenditure or investment, furnish as profit or interest, to produce as revenue. You hear? To give up possession of, on claim or demand, such as to surrender. Surrender. Mm. To surrender. Praise the Lord. Or relinquish to the physical control of another, hand over possession of. Oh, Amen. Yield. Amen. Yield. So are you, he are you hearing the whole thing here? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're reckoning and we're yielding. I hope you're hearing that. Hmm. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. Do you see the two places here? Do you see the two sides? As those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments for righteousness unto God. When we reckon, we believe, we think, and we consider. Do you hear that? Reckon. We believe, we think, we consider. That's reckoning, right? Now in 13, verse 13 here, we have this word yield. Yield. Or surrender. Surrendering our will to God and allowing Him. 
Is God able to rescue us? Amen. Yes. I'm going to try to wrap this up quick. You guys did get me up here real long. Yeah, so I'm right. just going to go a little bit over. Galatians 2.20. All right? Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life.